1915, 7,000 young New Zealanders volunteered to fight for king and country were put ashore at Anzac Cove, Gallipoli. For seven months, the Turks held them on the beaches. To win, they had to take the high ground. The Wellington first rifles attacked the ridge known as Chanak Bear. This film is their story. Dale Bradley, a New Zealander brought up in Canada. There's a bit in the middle there. His brother brought his attention to a New Zealand stage play. The script was actually given to me by my, uh, my partner, who's, who's also my brother in, in this business. And uh, he, he was intrigued with it, first of all, the stage play itself. And uh, he had an interesting story uh, to tell me, first of all, that he'd been watching Peter Weir's film, Gallipoli, with his young son. Uh, who said to him, Dad was New Zealand at Gallipoli? And uh, this was Anzac Day, and he just thought, this is, this is ridiculous. We, we have a whole generation growing up that don't know anything about one of the greatest moments in our history. And uh, so that developed his interest, and he came to me. And I have to confess, when he first talked to me about it, I, I wasn't convinced that we could make a, a great film. But like so many people before me, as I started to then read more and start to understand more of what really did happen, I became quite passionate about it. In fact, I think my passion for the subject overtook his, and uh, I became you know, quite determined, someday we're going to make this film. The script for Chanak Bear was based on Maurice Shadbolt's play, Once on Chanak Bear. It was interesting talking to Morris about it um, at the beginning. Understandably, Morris was fairly hesitant. Uh, here I was, a first-time director, and this was you know, his baby, his creative work, and to hand it over, which he would have to do, ultimately he'd have to hand it over to me and trust me to do something with it that he'd be pleased with. And so that was a hard decision for him, I'm sure. He was very gracious, but uh, we had several cups of coffee and several meetings, and there was once or twice where it seemed to be going off the rails and we managed to pull it back. And in the end, Morris had the confidence to let us go for it. One of the stars of the film is English-born actor Robert Powell. Okay, lads, back to work. Why would a British actor come halfway round the world to play a New Zealander in a New Zealand film? This was the script. It was, it's good. It's a good story. It's a good story, well told. Um, and it's not sentimental, which is really one of the very strong uh, elements of, of this story, is it's tough. What we might have to do, Steve, just put it like a... Tough on cast and crew, and tough to shoot. In only four weeks, 111 minutes of story. Another 500 miles. Um, 61 take two. Co-star Kevin Wilson, well known to New Zealand television audiences, talked about what it's like working with an international actor. Be serious. They're knackered. You knew that. We're taking reinforcements. And you're taking orders. As you were, Sergeant Major. So they give me a chunk bear at last, eh? Do you know what it means? Do you? 
That's the highest point on the peninsula. Control that hill and you control the war. What the hell do they know? They put us down on the wrong bloody beach for a start. Working with Robert. Great. No worries. I mean, it's, we're such a small acting community in New Zealand and we all get to work with each other so often, time and time again, and it's really great to have a fresh actor come in, especially an international actor like Robert, who's worked on so much. Um, and the amazing thing is that once we test ourselves against overseas actors, we realise that how good we are. And we are very good here. New Zealand actors at the moment are, are, are at their pinnacle, I would say. Um, and bringing in overseas actors tends to prove it. Though Robert is, is very, very good. With a small budget, small studio, small crew, designer Kevin Leonard-Jones had a few problems. Because of the, the size of the studio alone, 20 metres by 13 metres to do a war film is a bit of a, a mega problem, I would say. Um, and we had to build a cliff in there, enormous cliff, um, seven metres high, and as well as at the hill, which all the shooting was done on. Um, the reversals, cross shooting, up and down the hill. The Army Archives and the Army Museum helped us immensely with everything, from um, photographs right through to props, etc. They're immensely helpful people. And when we did the trenches and things like this, they told us exactly how to go about, about the trenches, because it's a pretty complicated process. It's not a case of just digging a hole in those days. They, these guys actually lived in there for a long time and, um, and died in there, of course. So. There's lots of special effects. Of course, the makeup uh, was an immense job for, a, for a, the size of the film. We had to um, make people look dead and hurt and wounded and shot and blood and etc, etc. But we had special effects as well, explosions and machine gun fire and rifle fire, etc, uh, inside the studio. So all these sort of people made a very good job, I think, in such a small space. Um, a lot of people in the small areas can be dangerous at times. At least after they'd been shot and blown up, the extras could relax on the grounds of the Avalon Studios. A bat and a ball. Cricket. Still, quick, quick, quick. films cost money. Money is always a consideration with any film. Yes, with Channing Bear it was. Um, it's very much an indigenous film. It's a story of New Zealand. Um, very much a New Zealand story, mainly New Zealand talent. What it does do, though, for the price, is to show what amazing value you can get in New Zealand um, from both talent and the use of the money is incredible. In Channing Bear, we have uh, some amazing new talent people who haven't seen, be, been seen before on the screen. A, lo a lot of the people come from television, uh, but they're just exceptional, uh, just exceptional talent. The, the acting is superb. And of course, backed up with Robert Powell, who, in a way, I suppose, supported them a lot, helped them a lot, coached them a lot, and really brought the best out of them. Film crews, actors, the director, the producer, all have to work very closely together and help each other. I don't know whether we can uh, we can organise something because it just it just feels it feels unnatural. It, it, I mean it, I can I'll work it out. But I'm just offering that if if you can help me, then while see they're what I doing mean. that, can I have a look at that? What that looks like? Because it looked funny to me, but if I look in the monitor, here was a script that could not be compromised. This was a New Zealand story. We couldn't compromise the script for the sake of the international audience. So here was the first dilemma. How could we make a film? How could we afford to make a film just for the New Zealand audience? 
And so we had a budget restriction right from the beginning. Right from the start, this could never have a budget that an international film could have because we had to make it believing that it was possible that revenue from New Zealand audiences could pay for the cost of this film. The film Chanak Bear is a story of characters, people, men, New Zealanders. You'll be right. Double Brigade Major. Colonel Connolly has refused an order, sir. Well, but what's the problem? You not hear my order, Colonel? Connolly? <laughs> and I'll repeat it, man. Wellington, move forward. These men will only move on my order, and I refuse to give it, sir. Refuse? Refuse. Oh, we'll take Chanak Bear. But in our own time, and in our own bloody way. It was quite a show, sir. Sir, did I hear you right, Sergeant Major? I might even have a salute coming on. You should stay out of the sun. There's nothing. You never won. And there's nothing. Go that way, mate. Don't go that way. Okay. Uh, we think of the armies in the Gulf War, and th those aren't people. Those are, are big theoretical concepts. What we have in Chanak Bear is individual boys and young men who have mothers and sisters and, and boyfriends and, and uh, relatives back home. And never in the film do we move back and see the impersonal army that has almost been a sport through the centuries. All we see is young men. 41, take one. Sounds rolling. 63, take one. And mark it. Today's young actors had to learn how war was fought in 1915, filming slate after slate, over 480, to put together a film that may be thought of as anti-British. There's, there's a slight sort of anti-British attitude to the script, but I, I wouldn't like a British audience to say that it's an anti-British film. I think it was because there were a lot of, you know, wonderful British um, soldiers who died on Gallipoli, and... Uh, some of them are very young. They were hardly more than 16, 17 years old. And they weren't, they were very different from the New Zealand and Australian soldiers who were basically farmers who were physically fit and very strong. Whereas the British kids came out of factories and out of slums and that sort of stuff. So they weren't, they didn't have the preparation or the mentality to do that actual job and get up those, those damn hills. Yeah. Yeah. So it never crosses my mind that it's that it's strange to have a Brit playing a, a Kiwi in a film that that uh, knocks the Brits particularly in this one. Um, and quite apart from anything else, we the British are very. I think you know we have a lot of faults, but uh, one of the good things is that we don't necessarily take ourselves quite so seriously as as maybe some of the younger nations do because we've been going for so long we can uh, we can afford to uh, to actually take the mickey out of ourselves and and also own up to our own mistakes and faults i mean i don't think that anybody is defensive about about owning up to the mistakes we made in the first world war a film crew is made up of 30 to 40 very skilled people four strong girls <laughs> it's very important that they all work well together Production mistakes cost money. 
Twelve hour days filming and rehearsing. Filming is a slow, repetitive job. This is one cast that won't have to refer to hymn books for this song. Again. And again. Everyone, there was still a lot of learning. A shelter from the stormy blast and our eternal home. But what, what we learned at, at Trentham, they explained to us, is that the soldiers in those bayonet charges didn't have any bullets in their rifles. And the term they used was have nothing up the spout. And we couldn't understand why was this. Why couldn't they have bullets in their rifles? And they showed us uh, the reason very dramatically. Because they said, your job is to charge and to take that hill. And they, they, they got our, our actors together and they said, on, on the order, we want you to charge, bayonet charge, and we want you to take the top of that hill. And they were charging up the hill and they all had bullets in their blanks in their rifles. On the other side of the hill, the army had placed some of their people who started throwing incendiary bombs and smoke flares and things across the other side. And the actors had no idea this was going to happen. And suddenly, as they experienced coming under fire themselves, they all hit the ground and they all started shooting. And they explained to us, you see, that's what would have happened in the battle. And you'd never have taken that hill. If you had bullets in your rifle, you wouldn't have taken the hill. You would have hit the ground, you would have fired back. So they sent the men into bayonet charges with no ammunition. The only way they could survive was to keep on running and to fight with bayonets. And if the other side was shooting at them, there was nothing they could do about it. They had to keep running and get up there and take the target uh, landmark. And that, that's what was happening at Chanuk Bear. Auckland, charge! <laughs> He asks, do we have a Union Jack to make a bold show? And a band to keep our spirits up? A what? A band, sir. A musical band. Chanak Bear, a New Zealand story. than the enemy. What the hell do they know? They put us down on the wrong bloody beach for a start. Then, the nation's true spirit emerged as courage reached new heights on Gallipoli's most feared outpost, Chanak Bear. We're cut off. We're completely cut off. What's going on up here? 
From Maurice Shadboat's acclaimed stage play comes the story of New Zealand's nationhood, forged on the killing slopes of Chanak Bear. You can't look after me all my life. Any sign of sickness? Bungley can't afford to fail, he knows that. 75 years after the debacle of the Gallipoli campaign, the truth can finally be told. Go, you bastard! We have been ordered to hold Chanik Bear forever. A story that will touch every New Zealander. One more charge! We make ourselves remembered! And a name that will be forever embedded in our history. Get down! Robert Powell. Short charges! Kevin J. Wilson. In an important motion picture, Chanak Bear.
I make that decision, Sergeant. I have a special message, sir. Uh, all the same. General Sir Ian Hamilton regrets that thus far the offences have failed to take Archie Baba or Koji, Koja Chemantepe, but he rejoices in the shining triumph upon Chanak Bear by... I'm sorry, sir, you aren't going to like this. Go on. By the magnificent Australians. The what? The who? By the Australians, sir. The magnificent Australians. What Australians? Where? He doesn't seem to know. It's New Zealand up here, sir. He says, in humanity's huge hour of trial, the British Empire's audacious feat of arms on Chunuk Bear has been a tonic. Who? The Empire, sir. He says, where so much is dark, where so many are discouraged, he feels both light and joy. He is uplifted, ennobled. Chunuk Bear, he says, will do. Will do? Will bloody do? Nothing about uplifting and ennobling his 20,000 fellow countrymen in Suvla Bay, getting his brother generals off their arses? He asks that you continue to strive with the utmost vigor and fury and and an utter disregard of life. Chunuk Bear must be held to the last man if need be. To the last fern leaf. He asks, have you got colours, flags, a Union Jack to make a bold show? To help Turkey's gun and find our range? And a band to keep our spirits up. A what? A band. A musical band. You're inventing this. So, that's good. That's all I've got. That's good. Let's do it again. Um, this time, Say water first. Water! Private South! Sir? I want an errand run. Quick, quick! Get out to Lieutenant Harkness. Go right to Clappers, man. See how things stand. Get back here smartly. I'll go. He's my runner, as I understand it, Sergeant Major. Your brother, my runner. It's getting thick. If Harkness has been hurt, someone's got to take command. I make that to Sergeant. I make that to Sergeant, Sergeant Major. Okay, rolling. Camera's rolling. Duck down. And. Action. Say water. Water. Private South. Sir. I want an errand run. Come, come. Get out the Lieutenant Harkness. Now go right to Clappers, man. See how things stand. Get back here smartly. Sir. I'll go. He's my runner, as I understand it. Your brother, my runner. It's getting thick. If Harkness has been hurt, someone's got to take command. I make that decision, Sergeant Major. Oh. Special message, sir. General Sir Ian Hamilton regrets that thus far the offences has failed to take Achi Baba and Koja Chemantepe, but rejoices at the shining triumph upon Chanak Bear by... Sorry, sir, you're not going to like this. Try me. By the magnificent Australians, sir. The what? The Australians, sir. The magnificent Australians. What Australians? Where? He doesn't know it's New Zealand up here, sir. He says... The British Empire's audacious feat of arms on Chanak Bear is a tonic. Who's? The Empire, sir. He says, uh, where so much is dark, where so many are discouraged, he is uplifted, ennobled. Chanak Bear, he says, will do. <laughs> Nothing about uplifting and ennobling his 20,000 fellow countrymen in Suvla Bay. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, getting his brother British generals up on their score butic asses. Chanak Bear. Chanak Bear must be held to the last man, if need be. Um, he asks, do we have a Union Jack to make a bold show? A what? To help the Turkish artillery find our range, eh? And a band to keep our spirits up. A what? A band, sir. A musical band. You're inventing this, Cyril. I couldn't, sir. He wishes to remind you that today God is bearing keen witness above. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Private South!
Get over there and witness Harkness. Yeah. I want to speak to Brigadier Johnson. <laughs> Finish licking British boots. Conley here, sir. Yeah, what? Well, indeed, we're holding on, sir. You'll soon have no colonial leech left left to lead. What? We'll ask. Demand. I know you're the pig in the middle, sir. Listen, sir, we're... The line's gone to it again. Oh, the brigadier's off looking for another bottle. I'll take it, sir. Good luck, sir. I mean... And action. Water, say water. Hello, hello. Look, these folks up here are fresh out of water. Water. W A T E. Private South. I want an errand run. Get out to the tenant houses, go like the clappers. See what the situation is and get back as soon as possible. I'll go. He's my runner, as I understand it. Your brother, my runner. It's getting thick. Uh, Hartman might be injured. Someone's got to take command. I make that decision, Sergeant Major. Ah. Special message, sir. General Sir Ian Hamilton regrets that thus far the offensive has failed to take Achi Baba and Koja Chemin Tepe, but rejoices at the shining triumph of Ponchanic Bear. Sorry, sir, you aren't going to like this. Try me by the magnificent Australians. The what? The Australians, sir. The magnificent Australians. What Australians? Where? He doesn't know it's New Zealand up here, sir. He says, the British Empire's audacious feat of arms on Chanuk Bear is a tonic. Who's? The Empire, sir. He says, with so much as dark, with so many are discouraged, he is uplifted, ennobled. Chanuk Bear, he says, will do. Will do. He's bloody do. Nothing that uplifting and ennobling as 20,000 fellow countrymen in Su Suvla Bay. Nothing about getting his brother British generals off their school butic asses. Bah! Chanuk Bear must be held to the last man if need be. He says, do you have a Union Jack to make a bold show? To help the Turkish artillery find our range, eh? And a band to keep our spirits up. A what? Band, sir. Musical band. <laughs> You're inventing this, Cyril. I couldn't, sir. He says he wishes to remind you that today God is bearing keen witness above. God? Private South, get over there and witness Harkness. I want to speak to Brigadier General. <coughs> He's finished, finished <coughs> licking British. I make that decision, Sergeant Major. Special message, sir. General Sir Ian Hamilton regrets that thus far the offensive has failed to take Achi Baba and Koji Chemin Tepe, but he rejoices at the shining triumph of Ponchanic Bear by... Sorry, sir, you aren't going to like this. Try me. By the magnificent Australians. The what? The Australians, sir. The magnificent Australians. What Australians? Where? He doesn't know it's New Zealand up here, sir. He says, the British Empire's audacious feat of arms on Chanuk Bear is a tonic. Who's? The Empire, sir. He says, with so much as dark, with so many are discouraged, he is uplifted, ennobled. Chanuk Bear, he says, 
Will do. Will do. Will bloody do. Nothing about uplifting and ennobling his 20,000 fellow countrymen in Suvla Bay. Getting his brother generals off their scorbutic asses. Chalik Bear must be held. To the last man, if need be. He asks, do we have a Union Jack to make a bold show? You help Turkish artillery find our range, eh? And a band to keep our spirits up. A what? A band, sir. A musical band. You're inventing this, Cyril. I couldn't, sir. He wishes to remind you that today God is bearing keen witness above. Oh. Private South, get over there and witness Hartless. I want to speak to Brigadier Johnson. Bang! The finish wrecking British boots. I'll go. He's my runner, as I understand it. Your brother's my runner. It's getting thick. If Harkness has been hurt, someone will have to take command out there. I'll make that decision, Sergeant Major. But rejoices at the shining triumph of Chumic Bear. Sorry, sir, you're not going to like this. Try me. By the magnificent Australians. The who? The Australians, sir. The magnificent Australians. What Australians? Where? He doesn't know it's New Zealand up here, sir. He says, the British Empire's audacious feat of arms on Chanuk Bear is a tonic. Whose? The Empire's, sir. He says, when so much is dark, where so many are discouraged, he is uplifted, ennobled. Chanuk Bear, he says, will do. Will do. Will bloody do. Nothing about uplifting and ennobling his 20,000 fellow countrymen in Subla Bay, getting his brothers and generals off their bloody asses. Chanuk Bear must be held to the last man if need be. He asks, do we have a Union Jack to make a bold show? I hope the Turkish artillery find our range, hey? And a band to keep our spirits up. A what? A band, sir. A musical band. You're inventing this, Cyril. I couldn't do is he wishes to remind you that today God is bearing keen witness above. God? Private South, get over there and witness Harkness. Yes. I want to speak to Brigadier General. Bang! He's finished the game for his bump. The Empire, sir. He says, where so much is dark, where so many are discouraged, he is uplifted, ennobled. Chanuk Bear, he says, will do. Will do, eh? Will bloody do. Nothing about uplifting and ennobling his 20,000 fellow countrymen in Souffle Bay. Getting his brother British generals off their scorbutic asses. <laughs> Chanuk Bear must be held to the last man if need be. He asks, do we have a Union Jack to make a bold show? To help the Turkish artillery find our range, eh? And a band to keep our spirits up. A what? A band, sir. A musical band. Ah, uh, you're inventing this, Cyril. I couldn't, sir. He says he wishes to remind you that today, God is bearing keen witness above. God? Hmm. Private self! Sir. Get over there and witness Harkness. Oh. I want to speak to Brigadier Johnson. Ah. He's finished licking British boots. Conley here, sir. Well, of course we're hanging on. 
You listen have no colonial else left to lead, sir. Well, ask. Come on. Yes, I know you're the pig in the middle, sir. What? The line's gone again. Well, Brigadier is looking for another bottle. I'll take it, sir. Good luck, sir. I mean. And Kara. Water, say water. Hello, hello, look. I'm These shot. folks up here are fresh out of water. Water. W-A-T-E. Get out there to Lieutenant Harkness. Now you go like the clappers, man. See how things stand and get back here smartly. I'll go. He's my runner, as I understand it. Your brother, my runner. It's getting thick. If Harkness has been hurt, someone will have to take command. I make that decision, Sergeant Major. Special message, sir. General Sir Ian Hamilton regrets that thus far the offensive has failed to take Achi Baba and Koji Chemin Tepe, but he rejoices at the shining triumph of Ponchanic Bear by... Sorry, sir, you aren't going to like this. Try me. By the magnificent Australians. The what? The Australians, sir. The magnificent Australians. What Australians? Where? He doesn't know it's New Zealand up here, sir. He says, the British Empire's audacious feat of arms on Chunuk Bear is a tonic. Whose? The Empire, sir. He says, with so much as dark, with so many are discouraged, he is uplifted, ennobled. Chunuk Bear, he says, will do. Will do, eh? Will bloody do. Nothing about uplifting and ennobling his 20,000 fellow countrymen in Souffle Bay. Getting his brother British generals off their scorbutic asses. Chunuk Bear must be held to the last man, if need be. He asks, do we have a Union Jack to make a bold show? Help the Turkish artillery find our range, eh? And a band to keep our spirits up. A what? A band, sir. A musical band. Ah, uh, you're inventing this, Cyril. I couldn't, sir. He wishes to remind you that today God is bearing keen witness above. God. Private South! Get over there and witness Harkness. Sir. I want to speak to Brigadier Johnson. If he's finished licking British boots. Conley here, sir. Yes? What? <coughs> well, indeed, we're holding on, sir. <coughs> You'll soon have no bloody colonial louts left to lead. <coughs> well, ask. Demand. Yes, I know you're the pig in the middle, sir. What? Listen, sir, we're in a... The line's gone again. Well, the Brigadier's looking for another bottle. I'll take it, sir. Good luck, sir. I mean... Hello? Hello? Water. Say water. Look, these folks up here fish out of water. Climb it out! Sir, on an errand run. Get out there to Lieutenant Harkness. Now you go like the clappers, man. See how things stand and get back here smartly. I'll go. He's my runner, as I understand it. Your brother, my runner. It's getting thick. If Harkness has been hurt. Someone will have to take command out there. I make that decision, Sergeant Major. Special message, sir. General Sir Ian Hamilton regrets that thus far the offensive has failed to take Achi Baba and Koji Chemin Tepe. But he rejoices at the shining triumph of Ponchonic Bear by. So I see you aren't going to like this. Try me. By the magnificent Australians. The what? 
The Australian, sir. The magnificent Australian, sir. What Australians? Where? He doesn't know it's New Zealand up here, sir. He says, the British Empire's audacious feat of arms on Tunic Bear is a tonic. Who's? The Empire, sir. He says, with so much as dark, with so many are discouraged, he is uplifted, ennobled. Tunic Bear, he says, will do. Will do, eh? Will bloody do. Nothing about uplifting and ennobling his 20,000 fellow countrymen at Zoufla Bay. Getting his brother British generals off their scorbutic asses. Tunic Bear must be held to the last man, if need be. He asks, do we have a Union Jack to make a bold show? And a band to keep our spirits up. A what? A band, sir. A musical band. Ah, you're inventing this, Cyril. Couldn't, sir. He wishes to remind you that today God is bearing keen witness above. Private South! Get over there and witness Harkness. Sir. I want to speak to Brigadier Johnson. <laughs> British Brit <coughs> Conley here, sir. Yes? What? Well, indeed they're holding on, sir. You'll see there's no bloody colonial out left to lead. Well, ask. Demand. Yes, I know you're the pig in the middle, sir. What? Listen, sir, we're in a... The line's gone again. Well, the brigadier's looking for another bomb. I'll check it, sir. Good luck, sir. I mean, 